Hello, my lovely anatomist and physiologist. Welcome back. We are still talking about our blood from chapter 18. I remember we talked about blood as a connective tissue, which means it's made up of specialized cells in a ground matrix. And so our plasma is our fluid ground matrix. And what we'll see is that the plasma is going to be Remember, let's say, um, let's say up here, about 55% of whole blood. And then as we look at the, that 55%, as we look at just the plasma itself, we'll see that 92% of the plasma is going to be water. And this is important, of course, we've talked extensively throughout the course about how all of the chemistry that's taking place in your body is happening in an aqueous-based um, environment, right? A watery environment. And so when we talk about transporting lipids, for instance, through the bloodstream, it's important to pay attention to, <laughs> oh, it's mostly water. When we talk about regulating the blood volume, right? We can just manipulate how much water is there and that will go a long way in helping us to make adjustments with the blood volume. Okay, and then we're gonna see that 7% is going to be consisting of what we can collectively call plasma proteins. And when we talk about these plasma proteins, we're gonna have three important categories. So the first one to mention is albumin. And albumin is going to be the most abundant of the plasma proteins. So of the 7% of plasma proteins, 54% will be albumin. Most abundant. I know you all are thinking like, oh my goodness, so many percentages. We keep dividing up the pie, dividing up the pie, dividing up the pie. And here, when we talk about the plasma proteins, we should know collectively it's 7% of the plasma, but I don't think it's important to know the percentage for each one of these. That's more just like giving you a firm, firmer foundation. Many of these plasma proteins, including the albumins, are gonna be made by the liver. So if a person has liver damage, then you will see trouble regulating your uh, cardiovascular system because you may not be making these proteins that you need. Albumin will be important transport proteins. So they're gonna help transport some fatty acids and steroids through the bloodstream. We just got done talking about how these particular types of molecules will have a hard time because of all of that water in the plasma. And then we'll see it's going to be important in helping to maintain the osmotic pressure of the blood. And I think here is the important piece of information. We'll hit it again in the future. Those albumin proteins don't really leave the bloodstream. So the albumin proteins don't really leave the bloodstream. They're really big. They can't cross through most capillaries. And so what that means is they're going to be important in helping to pull water back in. And so we'll add in that detail in a later chapter as we move through the course. The next important type of plasma protein is collectively referred to as globulins. Oops. And so here you should think about um, globular shape was one of our possible quaternary shapes of a protein. And so these are talking about proteins that are suspended and a fluid. So your globular proteins are your proteins that are suspended in the fluid. And this is gonna be the second most abundant. Again, I'm gonna give you another percentage just for reference, not because I think, oh, let's memorize all these percentages. It's about 38%. When we talk about the globulins, they are gonna be important in transporting. They're gonna transport iron. They're gonna transport um, other lipids and they're gonna transport some fat-soluble or lipid-soluble vitamins. 
specifically A, D, E, and K. We'll see that globulins will be also contributing to the osmotic pressure. But then probably the most important thing that we'll see is that our antibodies will be globulins. So we can talk about them as antibodies or we can call them immunoglobulins. And we can abbreviate the immunoglobulins as big I, little g, apostrophe S or IGs. And then we have a third plasma protein, which is fibrinogen. Fibrinogen is another one that's produced by the liver. It's the least dependent, so we're gonna see it only making up about 7% of the plasma proteins. And what we'll see is that the fibrinogen is soluble, but it will be converted to insoluble fibrin during what's going to be called coagulation phase. So meaning important in making the blood clot, the actual structure called blood clot. So we're going to be talking about fibrin and we're going to be talking about this coagulation phase in the future. The last of our important components of plasma, there's also um, let me just start again. The last component of plasma, we have about one percent We have about 1% of the plasma made up of like other stuff. So here we can list out some examples. So we have electrolytes. Remember electrolytes are code for ions. And so here you might think sodium ion, you might think potassium ion, and you might think calcium ion. We're gonna see that you're gonna have some oxygen gas and some carbon dioxide gas dissolved in your plasma as well as nitrogen gas. Nitrogen is the most abundant gas in our atmosphere. So we're definitely bringing that into our bodies. We're gonna have vitamins suspended in the plasma. We're gonna have nutrients. And when we say nutrients, we're talking about our biomolecules. So like glucose, amino acids, and so forth. And then we don't really have hormones on the list so we can add hormones in this list and we can also add enzymes to this list so these are things that are just kind of varying based on conditions of the body um, and so this is that one percent of the blood plasma all right that's it for plasma stay tuned for an overview of those formed elements and as always take care of yourselves and each other